The centennial of the Tulsa Race Massacre will be observed May 28th through June 1st. And right now there is feverish activity throughout the Greenwood District to complete, as much as possible, the myriad of projects under construction that will enhance the ability to share the story of Black Wall Street before, during, and after those terrible days in 1921. While it may not look like it from the outside, the chairman of the Centennial Commission says the Greenwood Rising History Center will open on time to the public on June 2nd. We're going to have Greenwood Rising History Center open and it will start uh, with the symbolic railroad tracks because black people used to just live just across the tracks and when you step into the building, you'll step across railroad tracks into the story. The History Center will feature four distinct galleries focusing on thriving pre-massacre communities across Oklahoma, the Red Summer of 1919, and the Tulsa Massacre itself. Another gallery will focus on Greenwood's reconstruction and second decline, leading up to the fourth and final gallery. Then you end up in this chamber, final exhibit called Journey to Reconciliation. And that journey is really the true work of Greenwood Rising. People will be able to sit in an amphitheater style space room equipped with classroom style presentation and monitors for the sole purpose of having programmatic discussion about this difficult subject called race. Phil Armstrong, project director of the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre Centennial Commission, has planned this moment down to the minute. 11.29 a.m. to be exact, We'll have a dedication ceremony right here on Greenwood and open up and dedicate Grim and Rising. 1129 gives reference to when martial law was declared at the end of the massacre. While the History Center is the largest, it is far from the only project sprinting towards completion. Just down Greenwood Avenue, the Vernon Chapel AME Church will be completing an historic renovation effort in time for the centennial. And across the street, under the I-244 bypass, a beautiful new walkway. So the pathway to hope is just like a literal pathway, it's a connector between the Greenwood District and John Hope Franklin Reconciliation Park, which is a wonderful park that is designed to be uh, reflective and commemorative of this history. Pathway to Hope has multiple purposes, uh, one of which is to bring visual representation to what happens when a community decides to build an interstate highway through the heart of a community and a neighborhood. Um, the second destruction, the second death knell of Greenwood's second decline was the building of the I-244 Interstate Highway. The Pathway to Hope will have an official ribbon cutting ceremony on Friday, May 28th, but youth groups are already checking it out. Vanessa Adams Harris works with the John Hope Franklin Center for Reconciliation. Carver Middle School, called and said they wanted to bring the whole entire school, eighth grade, seventh grade, and sixth grade. And so today was the beginning of bringing our middle school neighborhood school into their own district because Carver sits in the Greenwood district. Students marched more than two miles on a tour of the entire Greenwood neighborhood. The questions that they asked was very specific, you know, wanting to know where people were, where their businesses right here or were they right here. And then when you tell them, no, the businesses were all the way down Greenwood to where you are at uh, Carver, that this was the whole entire place. It's not just one little corner of Greenwood and Archer. No, it is all the way down. These historic boundaries will be commemorated with new markers later in the summer, revealing to visitors the true scale of what Greenwood has been and what it could be again. When these people come, uh, they're gonna tell us about the golden age of Greenwood, how it once was, and that's what I like to hear because I wanted to get back to that point again. So they're gonna tell us about, you know, all those 600 businesses that was here after the massacre. You're gonna hear these stories from the descendants uh, of the people that had these businesses, uh, the grocery stores, uh, uh, the haberdasheries, the, the, uh, the hair salons, the restaurants. Freeman Culver III is the president of the Greenwood Chamber of Commerce. The building we're in now was a bed and breakfast, and it was part of the uh, Green Book directory, the third floor was. 
And with the centennial of the Tulsa Race Massacre now just around the corner, it's an exciting time to stop by the chamber. We're excited to, to see a, a, a kind of a homegoing people that's connected to this history coming here to observe 100 years later, you know, what has changed, any progress, who are, who's still here, what's involved with the district. So that it is, is exciting to have those conversations because it's all about the future. That progress and excitement is drawing media attention from all around the world. Armstrong says it all began with the release of The Watchmen on HBO. For the next two or three weeks after that, you know, I was on daily phone calls back to back from every major news outlet in the country from, you know, it, and it ran the gamut from MSNBC to Fox News to CNN uh, to uh, even magazines and newspapers, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, BBC. The one great thing of this is that before this is over with, it's probably the, the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre and the history behind this incredible African-American community will probably become a household name around the world.